Okay, so today we're going to finish um, our nervous system and our circulatory system. So we're in 102B.8, which is, um, what page are we starting on? Page 103, which is the autonomic nervous system. So let me go ahead and share this screen with you guys. So oh, the autonomic nervous system, this is responsible for all voluntary body, involuntary, sorry, all involuntary body functions. So everything that happens without us making it happen in our body comes from the autonomic nervous system. It's automatic. Okay. So part of this is our digestive system. Our digestive system is also known as the gastrointestinal system. This breaks down our food into simpler compounds that can be easily absorbed into our body by our cells. If it's not absorbed, then it becomes eliminated um, as waste products. This entire process of digestion takes about eight hours. So, how come after four hours we're hungry if digestion takes about eight hours? Well, that's because your stomach is empty in about four hours, but the digestion going through the intestines and coming out the other side um, does take about nine hours. So we'll go back to the digestive system here. With the digestive system, this begins as soon as you put food in your mouth. Your salivary glands, which makes the saliva, um, which is an enzyme actually, starts breaking down your food. Once you swallow, it travels down the pharynx and through the esophagus and into the stomach. It's propelled by a twisting and turning motion called per-peristalsis, per per peristalsis, P E R. I-S-T-A-L-S-I-S. -S -S. Okay, that's the, that's the motion that our intestines does in our stomach to make the food move. Okay. Um, then once it hits our stomach, the hydrochloric acids, which is like your stomach acids, and several other enzymes further break down food. Once these enzymes are responsible for the breakdown of the protein molecules and to free the amino acids, which is just protein. So it's going to free these amino acids, which are important to our hair, skin, nails, right? We've all heard if we eat a lot of, you know, enough protein that it's good for our hair, skin, and nails. So, and muscles and everything else. So, um, that's, that's what this does. These polypeptide molecules and free amino acids are broken down, which are absorbed into our body. Okay, as our partially digested food passes from the stomach to the small intestines, this is where the assimilation of nutrients begins. So this is where it starts to just kind of dole out our nutrients. The nutrients then are absorbed by these things called villi, V-I-L-L-I. They're finger-like projections in the intestine walls that transport through the circulatory system and add these nutrients to other tissues of our body. And digested food then passes into the large intestines or the colon, which stores the waste for eventual elimination through the anal canal. This process of digestion takes about nine hours to complete. Happiness and relaxation promote good digestion as well as a good diet. Right, you know, if you eat something bad, how does it make your stomach feel? Or you eat something good, how does it make your stomach feel? Right, we all know that happy digestion systems are there. And there's a lot of gastrointestinal, you know, disorders. Um, people have IBS. You know, people have a lot of, of different uh, things that that can hinder their digestive system. And the food you eat too, you know, that can help or hinder your digestive system working properly. Okay, so like myself, I had my gallbladder out. Sometimes it really makes a difference on the foods that you eat. So that's part of your digestive system. <laughs> Miss Janie can tell you a story about me when I was in her aesthetics class that she wanted us to write 
the whole process of digestion. What did I write? I wrote in through the mouth, out through the anus, you know, because I didn't want to write the whole thing out. So what does she do? She comes to me. She hands me the book. She says, what is this? And I went, oh, I didn't know you actually read our papers. <laughs> so, um, yeah, don't try to cheat because I probably cheated first. And so I kind of, I tried anyway. I didn't get away with it. So there's your digestive system. We move to the excretory system. Excretory. This is where these things will exit out of your body. This eliminates solid, liquid, and gas waste products. So there's three organs that are included in your excretory system, your kidneys, your liver, and your skin. Okay, the skin, nope, that's all it's gonna tell us. Okay, so the skin covers about 20 feet of the body surface and is, in the, is the body's largest organ. So what does the skin do? Well, it releases water, carbon dioxide, and other waste through the sweat glands. Have you ever been next to someone who maybe ate too much garlic the day before, or maybe drank too much the night before? You can actually kind of smell, you know, the garlic or smell like alcohol coming out of their pores. Basically, you can smell it on their skin and because your skin is eliminating those products that are in your body that you know, especially spices are really good ones too. Curry is one that if you eat a lot of curry, you smell that coming out of your skin. Um, that's, a, that's also another one. Okay, the liver converts and neutralizes ammonia from the circulatory system to urea. Urea is then carried through the bloodstream to the kidneys for excretion. So that's basically your urine, right? That's what your kidneys do. I mean, sorry, that was your liver, not your kidneys. But it does end up being urine after a minute. Because when the kidneys receive urea from the liver, and then they pass it through the small tube-like structures known as nephrons, which are in your kidneys, these nephrons are going to filter more products than water, allowing usable nutrients to be reabsorbed into the blood. Excreted waste products travel through the uterus and the bladder, and then they're eliminated in the form of urine. So it starts in the liver, passes on to the kidneys, and then they'll use what they need, and then they'll eliminate what they don't need. Okay. So that's your excretory system. Three organs eliminates the waste. Then we have our respiratory system. Now the respiratory system, you can hold your breath a little bit, but not a lot because you know you can't hold your breath for very long, right? So in your respiratory system, this system is made up of organs and tissues that help you breathe. Okay, so primary functions, intake oxygen, exhale carbon dioxide. Both of these functions take place every time you take a breath. While it's possible to breathe through both the mouth and the nose, breathing through the nose is a healthier option. The nose contains mucous membranes to filter out dust and dirt and warms the inhaled air as it travels through the nasal passages. Uh, the doctor told me one time that if you breathe through your mouth a lot, you can also um, make your stomach have more, more like air, like more indigestion. Like you need to burp a lot more because you're just like getting all that air in, into your stomach. So you're supposed to breathe through your nose. Okay, so the lungs are one of the organs in the system. So the lungs are spongy organs composed of cells into which air enters when you inhale. These cells process oxygen for absorption into the blood and release carbon dioxide as you exhale. Okay. The diaphragm is a muscular organ that separates the chest cavity from the abdomen. The diaphragm expands and contracts automatically, forcing air in and out of the lungs. So when you're just sitting here breathing normally and you're not you know, doing any heavy exertion, right? you just have like a normal breathing. But if you're working out or you're doing something where you start breathing heavily, you're using your diaphragm more when you breathe and you're taking deeper breaths when you breathe heavily. How about in your mask? You guys think that 
when you're breathing in your mask, you're breathing all that carbon dioxide. But do you think like sometimes, oh, I, th I have bad breath more than you know, because you're breathing in your mask. Do you ever think that? I do. <laughs> it gets hot in those masks. And sometimes like it's hard to breathe in those masks. Okay, so the endocrine system. This one gets missed a lot on the test questions. The endocrine system is a ductless gland that manufactures hormones and secretes them into your bloodstream. So your endocrine system is composed of these glands. What it regulates is growth, reproduction, skin conditions, energy levels um, of your health and your body. Okay, so these glands in your endocrine system manufacture chemical substances, the chemical substance is known as a hormone, right? These hormones go directly to your blood stream. stream. So for an example, uh, the, where am I? the thyroid gland is a ductless gland that is responsible for making and storing hormones that help regulate the heart rate, blood pressure, body temperature, and the rate at which food is converted into energy. So that's an example of what the endocrine system does for you. The endocrine system directly affects the hair growth, skin conditions, and energy levels. Sign of fatigue or changes in hair growth may signal a need for medical attention. So basically your endocrine system is hormones. It's responsible for your growth and your health. Because right every time you hear somebody, something going wrong, you know, a lot of it's hormonal. Your reproductive system. Now, if you're going to give a definition of what your reproductive system is, this controls the process by which living organisms procreate. Okay, that's, that's your, your definition. It transfers the genetic code from one generation to the next. Estrogen and testosterone are two hormones that are produced by the reproductive system and have the ability to influence skin conditions such as acne, as well as hair growth and hair color. So yeah, testosterone and estrogen are big ones. All right, so true or false? The nervous system coordinates and controls the operation of the human body. What do you think? It's true. Nick, you're upside down. True. <laughs> you're upside down, Nick. Still? No. Yeah, you're upside down. Wow. Oh, no. Now you're not. Right. <laughs> I was like, you see, I'm on your head. <laughs> True or false? The nervous system is responsible for all voluntary body actions. That says involuntary, and I don't oh. know the answer to that one. I believe it's false. Let me reread that. The central nervous system is responsible for all involuntary body actions. And yeah, you would be correct. That would be false. Yeah. I think the involuntary is the um, autonomic, right? Primary components of the nervous system include the nerves, spinal cord, and... Arteries? No, 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 no arteries. Oh, shit. Nerves. nerves. No, it's already says nerves on there. Nerve, spinal cord, and uh, brain. Yep. I was gonna just gonna say, what are you using good one, right now? Good one, Ruben. Good one, Ruben. <laughs> brain. <laughs> the network of nerve cells that carry messages to and from the central nervous system is known as the network of nerve cells. Let me think we got on that one. Um, the first thing I thought would be spinal nerves, but um, we'll see what they want. The type of nerve cells that carry messages to the brain and spinal cord are called afferent or... Sensory. It's not sensory. the brain and the spinal cord. Yes, it is sensory. Okay. 
The types of nerves that carry messages from the brain to the muscles and glands are called efferent or... Motor. Um, yes. Good job. The nerve responsible for controlling the motor nerve function of chewing is known as the fifth cranial or the... I don't know that one. Damn. That one? The trig trigamin trigaminal, something like that. Trigeminal, yeah. Or the trifacial. You could say trifacial too. That'll work. Trigeminal or trifacial. Are gonna go to the primary nerve. We're going where? Oh yeah. Ruben. What happened? Yeah. Hear your conversation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> The prairie nerves of the arm and hand are the ulnar, radial, medium, and... I don't even know that one. Yeah, yeah that one's digital. Okay. It's your fingers, right? Like your digits. Yeah. That one's a hard one. The subsystem of the nervous system responsible for all involuntary body function is the... We just did that one. Right, involuntary. It's going to be Auto autonomic. Yeah, because it'd be automatic. That's how I remember that one. It's got automatic, so it's got to be that. During the digestive process, food travels through the esophagus to the I don't know that one. Stomach. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We got true. Pulse, brain, peripheral. Oh, peripheral. Okay. Sensory. Motor, trifacial, digital, autonomic, and stomach. All right. So, you know, there's a, I know there's a lot in this, this chapter. So let's go back and, oh, took me away. Okay, I'm gonna go back and get the circulatory system. And that is the last function for the last segment of this chapter. The next one's electricity. It's not nearly as much. Oh my goodness, come on. This is one of the longest chapters. This one and the skin one are probably the longest ones. Um, circulatory. So some little fun facts about the, the heart while I'm waiting for this to load here is on an average, your heart beats about 100,000 times per day. The heart beats around 3 billion times in an average person's life. With one tiny droplet of blood, there are some 5 million red blood cells. And it takes about 20 seconds for the blood to circulate through your whole body. Okay. So that's Anyone else know any fun facts? Anybody know any kind of fun facts about blood? Lymph, anything? No, uh, has anyone done blood hard before? To at, hard to look at my homework, I'm sure I'd- you Have some kind of fun fact in there? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have, have you ever donated blood? Cut myself the other day. Oh yeah, that's right, how's it doing? It's fine now. You had a good you had, you had a good first aid person. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I thought we I, I thought like, we were gonna call the ambulance. I go into like I, I cut myself like that once before. Someone like threw like a hatchet and I didn't realize it was a hatchet and they just threw it. It was in like a case and I went to grab it and it sliced my thumb like pretty severely and like I just started kind of tripping out like as soon as the blood hit. It didn't it didn't hurt severely like that. Kind of like the other day it didn't hurt severely, but like just the fact that I cut myself, it irritates me. And then it kind of just, I go into like a little bit of a shock. Um, I know someone that 
when she sees blood, she just faints. Like it's just a reaction. So, I mean, everybody reacts a little bit different. I've cut myself so many times throughout the years doing this that, I mean, when I broke my finger and my hand swelled and turned purple, I couldn't believe all the cuts and scars that I had on my hands from cutting myself throughout the years. And I didn't even know I had half of them there because, you know, I can't see them. But when my hand turned purple, you could see all the little white scars. <laughs> and my dad was like, what's wrong with your hand? Because I was showing him my hand because, you know, it was swollen and purple because I had a broken, I had a broken middle finger. And my dad said to them, you know, what's wrong with your hand? Why is all that? And I said, oh, those are scars from cutting hair. And he just looked at me like, what? You know, I guess he never really, my dad never really thought about cutting yourself, but yeah, okay. Yeah, I do. All right, let me pull this up, share it with you. Yeah, make this bigger. And we have the circulatory system. So the circulatory system actually is known as the vascular system. You might hear the cardiovascular system, um, but we also have a lymph vascular system too. Now, I know someone one time who went and donated blood and he went to, no, it was plasma that he went to go donate, said he'd never do it again, which I guess it hurts. I don't really know. So whose heart beats faster, men or women? What do you think? I don't even know the answer to that. And I don't have it in my book. Let's, let's ask Google. Whose heart beats faster, men's or women's? Oh, women. Um, men's average is about 70 beats per minute, while women are about 78 beats per minute, causing the female heart to work harder over the course of her lifetime. I guess I better start exercising more. Okay, so here we go with our, our circulatory system. I think this is kind of fascinating, actually, all the things that our blood does. Okay, so here we go. So circulatory or cardiovascular or vascular system controls the circulation of blood or lymph. Okay, so it consists of your cardiovascular or blood vascular system and then your lymph vascular system. So, in your cardiovascular system, you have your heart. Okay, you only have one. It's one of a kind muscle, because the heart is a muscle, but it's also an organ. It's cone shaped. It's about the size of your fist. It's right underneath like your left breastbone. That's where it's found. Um, this muscle is an organ and it's covered in this membrane called a pericardium. So the pericardium is like a, a protective covering for your heart, and it's what it's known as, a pericardium. What happens is it contracts and releases to force blood to move through the circulatory system. So your heart has these four chambers. You have your um, right and left atrium, and you have your right and left ventricle. Okay, so what does this do? Well, the atriums are on top. The ventricles are on the bottom. So I just remember that like the alphabet, A comes before V. So A is going to be on the top. You have right and left sides of your heart. Okay, so that's the, the construction of your heart there. Those are the what you're going to need to know, like atriums, ventricles, where they're located and what the pericardium is. All right, so then we're going to talk about your blood. Yeah. All right, so the blood circulates through the body. If you're going to ask, like, what's the definition of blood? It is a sticky, salty fluid that circulates through the body. Now, we all know what our blood tastes like. There's been one time in our life where we've cut our fingers, stuck it in our mouth, or had a bloody nose, and it kind of went down the back of your throat. So you all kind of know what your blood tastes like. It is kind of like a metal-type taste. Circulates through your body brings nourishment and oxygen to all parts of your body and carries waste products to the liver and to the kidneys to be eliminated. Okay. So on an average, an adult has, nope, doesn't come back to that. Okay, so on an average, an adult has eight 
to 10 pints of blood flowing through their circulatory system. So if 16 ounces is a pint, right, which is basically a water bottle size, I think a water bottle size is like 16.9, and you have um, eight to 10 pints in your body, what is that, 160 ounces, let's say? Let's get our, our math going, right? So if you have 16 ounces times 10, because I'm terrible at math, you have about 160, um, if you have 10 pints of blood, about 160 ounces, right? Because it says 3.8 to 4.7 liters. So we're going to divide that by... It's about nine and a half water bottles you have of blood in your body. How much? How many water bottles are you, do you drink a day, or should you drink a day? Eight or something like that, I think. I think that's cut. Like five. Five water bottles a day. I think that's extremely, extreme. I think I thought it was like four. Nowhere around that much water. That's crazy. I thought it was like four. Oh, let's find out. Ask Google. How much water are you supposed to drink a day? Google says uh, it takes about 15.5 cups, 3.7 liters of fluids a day for men and about 11.5 cups or 2.7 liters of fluid a day for women. So if it says we have 3.8 to 4.7 liters of blood, and we're supposed to drink 3.7, 2.7 to 3.7 in fluid a day. Think about a two liter bottle of soda, right? You're going to drink like one and a half of those of blood in your body, basically, maybe two, say two of those of blood in your body. And you're supposed to drink like one and a half of those a day. You're, you're drinking a lot more water than, than you have blood in your body per day. You drink five bottles of water a day, you'll say. So five. Yeah, good. Good. I try to drink this a couple of these a day. This is 40 ounces. I usually I can manage one. Two is hard. One and a half, pretty much. <laughs> but two is hard. It's really hard. Okay, but I do have my protein shake, which this could be fluid, right? <laughs> so it's my breakfast. All right, so our function of the blood. Our function is to transport um, oxygen, waste, hormones, nutrients to the rest of our body. It's going to protect us from the threat of infection and disease causing bacteria by using platelets that cause clotting of the blood to limit the loss of blood. That's why when you cut yourself, right, it eventually stops bleeding because these platelets cause your blood to clot. And then it will help with the temperature regulation the pH balance and your blood pressure in your body. Okay. So this is what our blood is made out of. Our blood is made out of plasma, white blood cells, platelets, red blood cells. Okay, so, and it's, the blood is made in our bones, like in our bone marrow. So the red blood cells are known as RBCs or they're known as um, red blood, or what is it, corpuscles, red corpuscles and white corpuscles, okay? White, white blood cells, white blood corpuscles or white blood cells, WBCs, uh, blood platelets and plasma. So our blood also has this thing called hemoglobin in it, which attracts oxygen molecules through a process known as oxygenation. This is why when you look at your, your blood, when they like take it out in a vial, you know, if you go um, have to do a blood test, it's always like this dark purplish magenta maroonish color because there's no oxygen in it. But the minute the blood oxygen hits the blood, it turns bright red. My mom did that one time. She they separate the blood with plasma and they put it in her face, like an injection or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's painful. Don't they call those um, vampire facials plasma, or something? Something like plasma, I don't know what. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've actually heard of those before. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard separating the plasma and separating the from the blood is, is from the bone. Yeah. Wow. I've heard of those. Yeah. Wow. Did she look different when she when she was finished? Well, it has to be like three or four times per year. So it, she she will look like younger. Well, that's what they say. Yeah. It's better. <laughs> it's better you know, to do. Um, the plasma than the other thing they use for the aging. I'm not sure what's the name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Leaving. Wow, that's interesting. I'd like to actually see that done. Um, <laughs> that's really <laughs> interesting. So our red blood cells also, um, yeah, when the oxygen is low, it looks deep scarlet. Okay, so our white blood cells, Hmm, that's all they're giving us. Huh? Okay, so our white blood cells, they're also known as leukocytes. Okay, that's another name for them. Or white corpuscles or white blood cells. They're the ones that are going to fight the bacteria. The white blood cells actually turn to pus when we get a foreign bacteria in our body, like a pimple, right? We have pus in our pimple. Well, that bacteria has caused that pimple to where it has affected our normal body function. Our white blood cells so like the army, they're going to come around and surround that bacteria. That's why we get pus and it'll just push it out of our, our system, supposedly. So our white blood cells or our leukocytes or our corpuscles, they fight bacteria and other foreign substances. And when you're sick, you're going to get a higher level of white blood cells because that's what they're supposed to be doing, bringing, you know, fighting whatever's hurting our body to bring it back down. Okay, blood platelets are also known as thrombocytes. Thrombocytes are what clots our blood. Okay, so when they're exposed to air or through surfaces, like if we have a bruised, we get a bruise, you know, and it turns color, that's our blood, you know, clotting up underneath that. Um, hemophiliacs, it's a, a, I don't know if it's like a, it's a disorder that, the platelets are, are low or missing from the blood. So someone who is a hemophilia could get a simple cut and it won't clot. And, you know, potentially it could be life, life hazard because, you know, their, their blood, they just keep bleeding and keep bleeding from just a small cut. So um, that is a, a condition for, for your blood. Um, plasma is the fluid part of the blood in which the red and the white blood cells and the blood platelets are suspended to be carried through the body. Plasma is about 55% of blood and it consists of about 90% water. So it's mostly water, okay. So that's what makes our blood. Then we have our arteries, okay. These are different types of blood vessels that carry blood to and from our heart. So our blood vessels are these like tubular thick or tubular elastic branching vessels. So we start with the arteries. Arteries are thick. Um, they're thicker than veins. Okay, arteries carry the pure blood from the heart. So in this whole process of circulation that goes through our body, once our heart picks the blood and cleans it, goes into the lungs for oxygenation, then this blood is going to be circulated back through our body, through the arteries. Once it makes this circulation through our body, the veins are what picks it up and brings the blood that has been, needs to be purified again, back to our heart and lungs for purification and oxygenation to go back out into our body. Okay, so the capillaries, capillaries are those little, um, they almost look like spider veins or the little red, you know, veins. A lot of people have them around their nose. Um, a lot of people get them on their legs, but you can get them anywhere on your body. But it's just a extension of your veins or your arteries that take nutrients or take waste back to our heart or back to our veins. But they just reach areas that veins and that arteries don't reach in our body. And those are capillaries. So the veins are thinner 
than the capillaries. And like I said, they carry the impure blood back to the heart. Now veins have these things in them called valves that kind of work with your heartbeat. So like say the blood's down at your feet and it's trying to come back up to your heart, right? Gravity's pulling it down. So what happens with the heartbeat is these valves open up, the blood shoots up, the valves close so it doesn't fall back down and it just works its way back up through your heart like that. Now, at, I cannot stress how important good shoes are for you to wear. Um, my veins are shot in my legs, shot after, you know, all these years of wearing cute shoes, you know, trying to look cute and they've busted. I've had surgeries on them. They've clotted. I mean, I've had several, I've had four surgeries on my legs, um, because of the veins, the varicose veins, those, those are the ones that look like they stick out, they're bumpy, they're rubbery. They look like a road map. Um, yeah, I, and it's all from not taking care of myself. So I cannot even stress. This is why my ankle swells so bad. This is why my feet always hurt because I didn't do it properly when I first started. So I'm stressing to you guys, wear good supportive shoes, even though they're not cute, wear good supportive shoes <laughs> or at least get really good insoles to go in your shoes. And good support is not cute not stylish but at the end of the day when you've been standing behind a chair for eight hours you're going to be thinking your feet your back everything when you have that good support can't even I can't even like go on enough about that <laughs> if I could drill that into your head and make you understand it it's very very important I wish I would have you know, but now oh well too late now so our blood flows through our heart right the process of blood traveling from the heart through the body and back to the heart is referred to as general or systemic circulation. So general or systemic circulation is where the blood circulates through your whole body. It's basically going through your whole body from the right atrium. Okay, from the right, right atrium through the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava arteries right? From the right atrium, blood is pumped through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, the blood is pumped into the pulmonary artery. Blood travels through the pulmonary artery to the lungs where it's oxygenated. This phase of circulation of blood is referred to as pulmonary circulation. So pulmonary circulation goes to the lungs. Systemic circulation goes to the heart. From the lungs, Newly oxygenated blood returns to the heart via the pulmonary vein and enters the heart's left atrium. Then it goes between the valves and the chambers. From the left ventricle, the blood pumps through the aortic valve into the aorta, and then it returns. So there's a whole complicated process that it goes through. But you need to know, systemic circulation is to the heart. Pulmonary circulation is to the lungs. Systemic circulation is back to the heart. Systemic circulation, again, goes through your whole body and then back into your heart. My dad had a valve in his heart <clears throat> that would take the blood from the heart, would open and push the blood into the lungs. And then the other valve opens and pushes it back into the heart. Well, the one that was going back into the heart was not working correctly. And they said, basically, your dad was drowning in his own fluid because his heart, his lungs were filling up with blood because it wasn't allowing it to circulate back to his heart. So they took him into open heart surgery. Amazing how they can crack open your sternum, crack open your chest, hook you up to a machine and have your machine keeping you alive while they repair the parts of the heart that need to be repaired. So they put a mechanical heart valve and it ticks. And if it's really quiet and you put your ear up to my dad's chest, you can hear this little ticking noise. He won't let me, I always wanna hear it, but he pushes me away. Um, but I did hear it twice. 
but it's a, just a little tick, 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 tick kind of a noise because it's beating with this heart. It's supposed to last them a hundred years. So um, they do a lot of really amazing things with the, the surgery, but he has a scar from here about right here on his neck and it goes straight down and I don't know how far down it goes. I seen it end at his waistband. So I don't know how far below the waist they cut him and they crack all this open and just hook you up to, to stuff. When it's over, because they've you know, broken the bones and moved the muscles and did all of this stuff, you can't lift anything over five pounds for a few weeks. And I was really amazed to find out that a gallon of milk weighs eight pounds. So he, my dad couldn't even lift a gallon of milk. I didn't know a gallon of milk weighed eight pounds. How many times do you pick up a gallon of milk and don't even think anything about it, you know? But um, it was amazing to me what they did. So now we know about these arteries of our face, head, and neck. All right, so common carotid, internal carotid, external carotid, internal jugular, and external jugular. Okay, so we know that the common carotid the internal carotid and the external carotid are arteries. Okay, the internal jugular and the external jugular are veins. They're located on the sides of the neck. This is like in the movies when they, you know, <laughs> this is what they're, they're slicing your throat with, but it's not nearly, that's not real. Let's just say that. So the common carotid, which is split into portions, supply the, the oxygenated blood to the head, face, and neck. The external or the internal and the external jugular vein um, take the impure blood back from the face, head, and neck to the heart for cleansing. Okay. So within that, we have branches now that branch off of that, which again, it goes right along with the bones. The occipital, back of the head, posterior auricular, behind the ear. Superficial temporal, you should be able to figure that like, oh yeah, the temporal is right here on the head, right? So it's got to be supplying the blood to the my top of my head area. The external maxillary, external maxillary, we're looking at that. So we know that that is the lower jaw. So it's the lower portion of the face. Where did these just go to? So eight there is just showing you some more branches of your superficial temporal and it's showing you the other branches of the external maxillary. And then we're going to go to our hand and our arm. Again, it's going along with our bones, our ulnar and our radial, right? Those are the arteries. Um, the ulnar, this little pinky side, the radial is the thumb side. So it's going down our arm there. We get to our feet. Again, it's going with our, our bones. Um, one is around the kneecap. Two and three are the shin area, the tibula. The four is the back of the foot. The five is the saponeus vein. That vein right there, the saponeus vein, that's the one that I've had surgery on several times, a couple of times actually, two on each, each leg. Um, around that area too, that's the one that they, they used to take out if they were going to put it um, in your heart area, but now they have better stuff. Well, they may still use it, but then you have a few more femoral, can't say that, for more femoral, femoral vein, um, which is on the upper part of your leg, like on the inside. So our lymph vascular system, it sort of does the same thing. It transports, what does it transport? Nourishment from the blood to body cells and tissues, carrying away from the tissues, the products of metabolism, chemical changes such as carbon dioxide, bacteria, and certain fats from digestion. And then it helps maintain your fluid balance and it'll distribute germ-fighting white blood cells to help with your immunity. Within our lymph vascular system, we have lymph and we have lymph nodes. You know when you go to the doctor and they always go right here and they're checking this stuff 
right here in the feel in your, your neck, that's checking to see if these lymph nodes are swollen. Because a lot of times swollen lymph nodes will indicate that there's something, um, some bacteria or something with you. You have a lot of lymph nodes in your um, underarm area, in your groin area, around your neck area. Lymph is a colorless product as a byproduct from plasma passing nourishment to capillaries and cells. Lymph nodes filter foreign particles. Swollen or tender lymph nodes may indicate infection in the body. Okay. Um, lymph nodes that are most often affected are in the neck and under the arms. Many other circumstances may be causing swelling. If you have any swelling, then you need to check with a doctor. Intercestular fluid is the fluid between cells and tissues, is referred to as a liquid substance of the body. The spleen itself is part of the lymph vascular system. The spleen acts as a blood filter, controls the amount of red blood cells and blood storage in the body, and helps fight infection. It's located under the left side of the abdomen, under the ribs. So that's your lymph. They actually have massages that you can do for your lymph nodes to like kind of empty them out. But if you're not trained properly on how to do that, you could actually make someone sick. So um, I've never had one of those kind of massages, but I read about them. <laughs> they sounded interesting. <laughs> Okay, so true or false, the cardiovascular system is true. also the blood vascular system. It's true. True or false, the cardiovascular system uses only arteries to circulate blood through the body. It's false. false. Yeah. Okay, the heart is encased in a membrane called. Starts with the P. Pericardium. Oh, okay, okay, I won't forget it though. I remember it though. Pericardium. The blood carries, pericardium, yeah. The blood carries toxins and waste products to the liver and kidneys to be excreted. I don't know. Yeah, like eliminated, something like that. Yeah. White blood cells are also called white corpuscles or. Starts with an L. Just went over that. I don't even know. Leukocytes or WBCs could be. Um, bum, 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 bum. The fluid part of the blood is known as. That one starts with an E. Uh, no, plasma. Plasma. It's plasma, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Elastic, thick-walled blood vessels that carry pure blood are known as. Veins. Mm, pure blood. Oh, um, arteries. Yes. Arteries. The process of traveling from the heart throughout the body is known as systematic or or systemic. Systemic or last word is circulation. That one would be, it would be general. The radial artery supplies blood to the thumb side of the arm and. <laughs> it also is attached to your arm, right? Your hand. Lymph distributes white blood cells to help develop. That's what we need. Oxygen be immunity. Um, true, false, pericardium, eliminated. Okay. Sites. Plasma. Arteries. General circulation. Hand. That was a weird question. Uh, immunity. Okay. So we're done with this. Um, 
Ruben Nick. You guys can have some practice study things on this thing. Say tomorrow's tomorrow is Thursday, right? Yeah. So I'll give you practice tomorrow. I know Dulce, you're not coming till next Thursday, right? Next week. No, yeah, I'm coming tomorrow. Oh, you are coming tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So I'll give you guys a practice test on this. Um, give you a couple days to work with it because I know it's a lot. So then we'll have our, our final test on um, Saturday. Okay. The test is about what we saw on this day yeah. or do we um, have the whole something else? Yeah, you missed the first portion of it, which was last week. Yeah. So, um, do, do you have your books and everything? I already downloaded, so I'm, I'm not sure which one should I um, read. So in the science book, that's the one you'll need to look the at. Science, science. okay. Anatomy. Yeah, the anatomy chapter, um, the portions of the anatomy, which would be um, 102.4 through, I think it was seven, seven? six, seven, maybe eight. Yeah, 102.4 through eight. Right, okay. All right, you guys, I will see you tomorrow then. Have a good, um, have a good rest of your day. All righty. You need to. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.